So let's say we have a one gram block of metal with the current temperature of 150 degrees Celsius. And let's also imagine we have 10 grams of water with the current temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. What's gonna happen if we throw in this really hot block of metal into this water? Well, let's think about it. We throw in the block into this, this puddle of water. Now what's gonna happen? Well, we know because we have a really hot block of metal and we have this relatively cooler water, we know we're gonna have a net flow of heat. We know heat is gonna flow from this very hot block of metal into this colder water. And essentially heat's gonna keep on flowing until we reach thermodynamic equilibrium, which is essentially the zeroth law of thermodynamics. But we know this, we know this from common day, everyday experience. We know if we have a hot object and it's in contact with the colder object, we know heat is gonna flow from the, the object with a high temperature and it's gonna flow to the object with a lower temperature. So we know heat's going to keep on flowing and eventually enough heat will flow until we reach thermodynamic equilibrium where we both have the same temperature. So for example, let's say heat starts to flow where this block of metal loses heat while this water gains heat. And as this block of metal loses heat, its temperature is going to decrease. And as this water gains heat, its temperature is going to increase. And eventually we're going to reach thermodynamic equilibrium. And let's say once we've reached thermodynamic equilibrium, we're at this temperature. We're again enough heat as lost so now we have the same temperature of both the block of metal and the water so now we're at thermodynamic equilibrium so now we're going to have no net flow of heat but you might wonder how could we have determined what that final temperature would have been because we know heat's going to keep on flowing until they both reach the same temperature and we're at thermodynamic equilibrium but under these conditions how can we determine exactly how much heat will flow and, and exactly what the final temperatures will be of this solution once we've reached thermodynamic equilibrium well determine that there's something really important we need to realize we need to realize we know this block of metals losing heat and we know this water's gaining heat and we need to realize that the amount of heat that this block of metal lost equals the amount of heat this water gained. Because of course, if this block of metal loses heat, where is that heat going to go? That heat is going go to go to, to this water. So we know that if we, the exact amount of heat that this block of metal lost equals, is exactly equal to the exact amount of water, uh, heat that this water has gained. So now we know that the amount of heat this block of, this block lost equals the amount of heat this water gained. And we also know the specific heat capacity formula. We know if you know the mass of an object and the specific heat capacity of an object and the observed change in temperature that the object experienced, you can determine how much heat was required to cause that observed change in temperature. And we've learned about the specific heat capacity formula. I have a link of it below if you're not familiar with it, but we're familiar with this formula. So we know Q equals MC delta T. So now that we know this, we know this Q represented the heat that this block of metal lost. But we know Q equals MC delta T. So now we know this Q, which represents the heat that the block of metal lost, equals the mass of the metal multiplied by the specific heat capacity of the metal multiplied by the change in temperature that the metal observed. So we know Q equals this term. We, we know this from this formula. And again, we also know this Q represents the heat that the water gained. We know this heat represented that, that, that heat that the water gained. And again, we know Q equals MC delta T. We know Q equals MC delta T. So the amount of heat that this water gained, the Q that this water gained, equals the mass of the water multiplied by the specific heat capacity of the water multiplied by the observed change in temperature that the water went through. So now we know this equals this. We already explained the amount of heat that this guy lost equals the amount of heat this guy gained. So, so they equal each other. And we also know this essentially equals this. And, and again, this equals this. And again, so, so we know this. So now we know this guy must equal this guy. So, so, so we know that. And again, it's, it's just really just simple math and logic tells us this. So now that we know this, there's something really important I need, I need to mention though. Remember, this block of metal lost heat, so it lost a certain amount of heat, while this water gained heat, it gained a certain amount of heat, and the amount of heat this guy lost is exactly equal to the amount of heat this guy gained. But we know this metal lost heat. It lost heat. So this is really minus Q, because it lost heat, equals the amount of heat this guy gained. So this really equals plus Q. Because again, this guy loses heat, so minus Q, 
this guy gains heat, so plus Q. So, so it's important to realize. So this is actually the real formula. Minus Q of the block equals positive Q of, of the water. So now that we know this, really, to, so again, we know this equals this. So really what we need to do is we need to do minus this guy equals plus of this guy. So, so, so again, you, that's a really important point. You, you, you can't ignore that. You need to realize that the magnitudes of these guys equal each other, but this guy lost heat, so it's minus. So this entire thing has to be minus. And essentially the way the math works is if, if you're taking the minus of this entire guy, essentially this guy's going to be minus and this guy's going to be minus, but those can cancel each other. So now we know, so this guy's also minus. So essentially what you do is you just reverse the signs. And again, you can just use some simple math and, and, and some algebra and you'll see essentially what this translates to is essentially you would just reverse these. You would just flip these over. And if you don't believe me, you can, you can do the math yourself. You can do the math yourself. You can have this guy, then you can do the minus of this guy and see what you get. And you'd essentially be left with this guy. You just uh, rearrange those. So now we have this formula. Now we know this, which again represents the, the heat, the heat of, of the block. And we know this, which represents the heat that this, the water gained. And we know they equal each other. And we've already accounted for that minus by flipping those. So, so we've already accounted for everything. So now we know this guy equals this guy. So now we just use this formula. Now we just plug in the values. Remember, this represents the mass of the block of, of metal. This represents the specific heat capacity of the block of metal. So let's imagine it has this specific heat capacity. This represents the initial temperature of the block of metal. This represents that final temperature of the block of metal, which again is what we were interested in. This represents the mass of the water. This represents the specific heat capacity of the water. And again, this represents the final temperature of the water, which again, what we're interested in. And this represents the initial temperature of the water, which we know is 20 degrees Celsius. So now we just simply plug in values. We just plug in all our values. And now we just use some simple algebra. And we know, essentially, we distribute. These multiply, then you, you distribute. So you multiply that by that and multiply that by that. And again, the same thing. Multiply these together, then you distribute. And again, so, so that's just algebra you should be familiar with. So now we essentially are left with this. And now it's just more algebra. You would essentially add T one TF to both of these sides, and then you would add 800 to both sides. And I've kind of been ignoring, ignoring units, but essentially you would just solve for TF. And if you were to solve for TF, again, and then, and then so again, so you add TF to both sides, you add 800 to both sides. Now you just divide both sides by 41 to solve for TF. And you would get a TF of 23 0.1 degrees Celsius. So now you know that's the final temperature. Remember, this TF represented these TFs, which represented the final temperature of this guy, which again, and also represented the final temperature of this guy. And you know they both, once they reach thermodynamic uh, equilibrium, they'll both have the same temperature. So that's the final temperature of both objects. And that's really the final temperature of the system, which again, we, we already explained. So now we know once we throw in this really hot block of metal, It'll lose some heat, it'll lose some heat, and it'll keep on losing heat, keep on at heating up the temperature of the water, while this guy's temperature would keep on decreasing, and eventually it would lose enough heat where the temperature of the block of metal equals the temperature of the water, and we've reached thermodynamic equilibrium. And if you want to determine that exact temperature at thermodynamic equilibrium, you use this equation, and now we know.